I, I, uh, it's interesting because the video changes what, what I'm going to say a little bit because I, I think that um, it, pr it gives you a, a pretty incredible picture of, of the soccer legacy. And, and I really appreciated hearing Aaron Graham speak first because I think one thing that we all have in common here is an appreciation for the history of the game and, uh, and for the place it's come from to where it is now. And, and to be able to, to grow up with that and to, to witness it firsthand and uh, you know, I was I was ten year old, ten years old when I first met Tony Miola, and I grew up with your with your cards, Des. So um, I, I really appreciate that. But there's I've been fortunate to be at these Hall of Fame events for a long time, and and they have an incredible energy about them. There, there's just something that we can all acknowledge that there's something special that happens uh, in the soccer community, and specifically in, in this building um, is one of those one of those moments. I. I, I Correct me if I'm wrong, I think the last time you were in this, in this stadium was 13 years ago when the women played Germany in truly one of the most special games that I've ever witnessed. And I've seen a lot of games before and, and since. And uh, for those of you who don't know, it was the quarterfinal of the, of the 99 World Cup. And uh, uh, Brandy gave up an own goal and or scored, scored an own goal in the first five minutes. And uh, the US came back and equalized. And Marin Miner scored an incredible goal a few minutes before halftime, and I remember Tom King coming up to me uh, at halftime and saying, so can they do it? And I said, three, two, no problem. So I, I hopefully Tom somewhere, to, he wrote that down. Um, but, but the incredible thing was that, that that was a turning point, because if in those 45 minutes, the, the group that's here and, and the, the, the group of players that, that, that were a part of those, those um, those formidable years, the national team weren't able to come through. I'm not sure that I'm standing here, and I'm not sure that he'd be standing here next. And I'm not sure that that we would be celebrating the legacy of women's soccer in this country that we are. And so I don't know exactly what was said in in, in the, the locker room, but I think there was some swearing, um, you know. But at the end of the day, it, that's a pretty incredible thing. But I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you one one more moment uh, from that, that that's pretty special. And it's, it's late, in the half, late in the second half, game's tied 2-2, and he decides to make a change. And he brings Shannon McMillan in, we think for, for uh, Milbert, for, for Tiffany Milbert, and, uh, and Max first touches the ball as a corner kick. And she serves the corner kick, and Joy scores a header. And I don't know what inspired him to, to make that change at that moment, but I do know that this stadium erupted. And I know that that's a moment that I'll never forget for as long as I'm around the game. Um, so whether it's divine intervention or Saima or, or whatever it is that, that led to, um, to that moment, it's pretty special. Um, I, I do want to talk to you a little bit about why he's being inducted today and, and, um, and, and how this came to be. And it's, it's because, in my, my feelings, is he never expected to be here. He never expected to be putting a red jacket on. And you know, I, I asked Anson what, what his thoughts were and, and how he knew in 91 when, when he brought him into the full team for the first time that, that, uh, that my father was the right person. And he said, because from the moment he stepped onto the field with the, uh, the team, he had a humble, quiet confidence about himself. And I can't imagine a more accurate way to describe uh, his humility. And that's, that's the most underlying um, quality that, that he's brought to his coaching and his life for, you know, for my, uh, you know, my entire consciousness. And he develops that confidence because he works his ass off and he's never stopped working. One of the things that wasn't talked about in the video was in 2008, he was brought back in um, by, by Sunil uh, to coach the U20 team. And uh, it was an incredible experience for me. I, I traveled, my mom and I traveled out to Chile for the month and, and uh, we're with the team. And they've won the, the, uh, the gold medal, they beat North Korea. And it's about four o'clock in the morning and the coaches are all gathered in his room doing a video session. And, and those things, you know, it, it's, it's almost not surprising when you know him. You know, the video could be broken down tomorrow, but he wanted to see, he wanted to know. And, uh, and, and so his ability to work for, for it and to, to commit to it, you know, made him worthy. But even that's not his real legacy. His real legacy is what he's done for tens of thousands, and maybe hundreds of thousands of soccer players around this country. And it started in 1982 when he started Soccer Plus, 
and it carried through when he was with uh, Region 1 and the youth national teams. Uh, he traveled to Australia in 93 with the U20 men. And it's not about the soccer. It is, but it's only because soccer is the medium that allowed him to never stop being a teacher. And Tiffany Roberts, Sahedic, uh, said, it, said it this way, is, you know, most of, she came into the national team at, at 15 or 16. She said, most of what I know about soccer is from Tony. But what shaped my life are the lessons that translated off the field. And, and that's, that's how I feel. I mean, I, I love the game and I'm, I'm a part of the game, but I'm a part of the game because he made me love the game. And because he, he showed me how to extract lessons and move on. And the team loses in 95, they extract the lessons, and they're successful in 96. And that's the, that's the legacy, that's the special quality that he brings, his ability to do it all. And so Tom Stone, his assistant in, in, uh, in 2008, um, uh, summed it up as, as succinctly as I possibly ever could. He said, he lives his daily life as a true champion who cares for his players and for his staff, and, and I'll editorialize here, and for anyone who ever interacts with him. Um, and he lives with integrity and has given himself professionally to advancing our sport and, and, to, uh, and to growing our game. And I, I feel incredibly humbled and honored to present uh, my father, one of the greatest people I know, into the uh, National Soccer Hall of Fame class of 2012. Got to be pretty proud about my son, and I know my wife Diane out there is as well. Um, all our sons are special. We have two sons and a, and a daughter here. My son Alex, who works for ESPN, is out in the audience. Our daughter-in-law, Nicole, is out there. Um, and Anthony, the other son. Our other two sons happen to be marooned out in Goodland, Kansas. They were driving across country to be here. Broke down on Friday. Goodland, Kansas is 170 miles from the nearest uh, rental car facility. They have their dog, so they couldn't fly. Um, so we miss them here because it's a chance to get our whole family together, but um, uh, they're here in spirit. So Anthony, thank you very much. I'm so proud of him. You can see why I am proud of him. Uh, he was my biggest fan and the biggest fan of the teams I coached. Um, he learned not just from Diane and I, but from all our players, and some of them were here, and they were like uh, parents for us, uh, because my boys didn't have men as role models. They had fantastic female athletes as role models, and I think it shaped them as young men. I want to congratulate the other honorees and all the um, honorees from the past. I mean, it's incredibly humbling to go into uh, the hall with uh, Desmond Armstrong, Tony Miola, and Claudio Reyna, and Graham Jones. I mean, this is a fantastic um, class to join with. Graham Jones was there in 91 when no one else was covering women's soccer. When the world media thought I was Anson Dorrance, because I was wearing a track uniform, and he, he looked like the head of delegation wearing a suit on the uh, touchline, I mean, on the sideline. Um, and you know, then to watch Desmond and, and Tony and Claudia really take this, uh, our men's team, to uh, a place they've never been before and, and, 
And for us, even in a game like today, playing against Brazil, to have optimism and enthusiasm and looking for our team, well, they started it all. And um, it's pretty amazing, and I'm honored to be with you guys. Of course, I want to thank the Hall, uh, Hall of Fame and, and the committee for voting me in because, you know, I thought I had a pretty good chance going in as a coach. Of course, there's no coach category. As a builder, there's so many fantastic people out there that have uh, made huge, huge contributions to our game, and um, I'm uh, doubly humbled to go in as a builder. You know, this is really about thanks. I'll be thanking a lot of people here, and you know, I have to, you know, start with my parents. My mom's name was Welcome, and my dad, Tony Senior. Uh, I was little Tony growing up, and you know, they instilled a love for sports in me, an integrity and a fairness of how you play and compete. My mom was a great athlete. And I used to shoot baskets with her, so you know, for me. Females always had the right to play sports and to uh, have that arena to dominate in. And, um, you know, they were my biggest fans. And, um, you know, they passed away in 2008 um, within six months of each other. And I think they were there helping me win uh, down in Chile with our U20 team. I want to thank my wife, Diane, who's hung in there with me, and do you hear what Graham said, Di? It's not all rubbish, there's memories and all those memorabilia things in the garage. <laughs> so I really appreciate that, Graham, okay? I really appreciate that. So uh, those memories we have to cherish. Um, but Diane has been not only uh, my wife, my best friend, she's been like an assistant coach for me. I don't think the women, and the, there are many of them are here, would have, um, liked me until they met her and realized, well, if she's married to me, it can't be all bad. Um, she was our energy coach. Uh, she's taught me so much about um, how to uh, communicate with people, certainly with uh, the women that I coach. And um, she has you know, created a family for our four sons. Nicole, our daughter-in-law, and, and the two of us. And um, I love you, Diane. Thank you very much. I've talked to you about my sons. You can see how proud I am of them. Uh, uh, Anthony, Alex, Andrew, and Nicholas. Nicholas is the last one in college, thank God. Um, and you know, the best thing about them is they're all so close. So even though there's nine years between Anthony and Nicholas, when Nicholas did a, a freshman year over in Madrid, uh, at the end, of, the end of his freshman year, Anthony flew over and they spent a week or so, uh, you know, touring Barcelona and New York and some of the other sites. And I just love how they um, are friends as well as brothers. <clears throat> you know, my, I've had a lot of great coaches. You know, I've had unbelievable coaches. Um, Starting when I was in high school, and I played three sports in high school, and Bob Landers and Lee Bogley, my soccer coaches, and uh, Mill Mason, my basketball coach, and Charlie Wynn, Wynn my uh, baseball coach. And then I had Irv Schmidt at, at Springfield College, who's a legendary coach. Um, and I had a professional coach, um, Renee Cormans from Holland, who um, passed away last year. But those coaches, and I had other, many other coaches too, but those in particular had such an impact of my own coaching. And I like to believe, and I know it's true, that there was a little piece of them in each one of uh, my teams, whether it was the 96 Olympic gold medal team, the 99 World Cup championship team, or the 2008 U20 World Championship team. I learned so much from them. <clears throat> Then my colleagues at U.S. Soccer, you know, I would have never got a chance to um, coach internationally except for Bob Gansler, and I, I don't know if I've thanked you enough times about that, Bob, and ha taking my coaching uh, licenses with Bob as, as a mentor was a tremendous learning experience. Um, Bob, Bobby Howe and Mooch Meiernick were the coaches in that 93 uh, World Cup team, um, tremendous 
learning experience there, coaching with the men. Uh, what can I say about Anson Dorrance? He um, gave me a chance to join that team in 1991. I uh, came in a few days after the birth of my youngest son, Nicholas, uh, into a training camp in Colorado Springs. I was a little bit concerned we had to climb the fence to get into our training field because we didn't have a key to the gate. Um, but it wasn't long before I, I realized the genius of Anson and um, how good that team was and their own aspirations. And uh, he gave me a chance to be with that team and then um, obviously he's a legend and taking over for him was probably the most difficult professional thing I ever did. But uh, I, I'm proud to say that Anson's a friend and continues to be somebody I can call on with advice. In fact, one of the great things, Anson, and you might not remember this, is when I was trying to figure out how to keep Michelle Akers in the game, and I called Anson, and he said, hey, throw her in the midfield. She used to be a midfielder. I said, that's a great idea. And of course, she became a fantastic midfielder, a holding midfielder. I couldn't use the word defensive midfielder because she wouldn't let me, but a holding midfielder. And um, her career is uh, also legendary. But I had other great coaches. Uh, some of them are here. April Heinrichs was my assistant coach in 96. Um, was when I um, was the head coach in 99. She was our U16 coach. And then she took over in 2000. Uh, Jay Hoffman, uh, Lauren Gregg, fantastic assistant coaches uh, that I learned about. And to be fair and to give, um, to give the credit where credit is due. That move with Shannon McMillan was Lauren Gregg and Jay Hoffman coming to me and say, make the change now because Shannon will take the corner kick. So I got credit for it, but we, we made the change. Shannon ran in, took the corner kick, put it on Joy Fawcett's head, and we beat Germany 3-2. And by the way, that was the last time Germany was beaten the World Cup until this past summer when Japan knocked them off in the quarters. Um, other assistant coaches like uh, Tom Stone and Cap Mertz that were my U20 coaches, um, all these people I learned from and they gave so much in themselves. And the key thing is their loyalty. And uh, you know, I mean, it was times when Jay Hoffman would walk into the office and he would disagree with me 100% on what we were doing. Um, but he would never say it out in the field. He'd never say it to another player. We would just discuss it and figure it out in the office. And that's uh, something that I uh, truly appreciate about my coaches. And then, of course, the players. And many of them are here. Uh, Carl Overbeck, Mia Hamm, <coughs> Shannon, and Karen. I mean, um, you guys did special things because you're special people. And that's why I'm up here today. And I will never lose sight of that. The players that made special sacrifices on the field. And that team that I coached, the 96 and 99 World Cup teams, I never had to make a disciplinary decision. When we went into an event, I called Carla in and said, Carla, what's the uh, curfew? And I was ready to say like midnight or something. She said, let's get them in at 11. Fine. You know, uh, Mia Hamm, every, um, every journalist would say to her, um, what's it feel like being the best player in the world? And she'd say, I'm not the best player in the world. If I could run all day like Christine Lilly, or I could lead the team like Carl Overbeck, or I could you know, head the ball like Michelle Akers, then maybe I'd be the best team, uh, player in the world. I just am a player on the best team in the world. And that type of leadership, and I don't know if Mia's left here with Garrett here, but that type of leadership uh, you can't pay for as a coach. Because every young player coming into the team, that's what they heard from the number one star on the team. And that's how that team was, and it was, remarkable and it took me a few years to coach professionally to realize how special they were as far as how they disciplined themselves so thank you ladies and then finally u.s soccer uh they gave me an opportunity alan rothenberg took a goalkeeper coach hank steinbrecher um agreed and they let a goalkeeper coach take over uh, a world championship team from a legend anson dorrance and the first year, I made a lot of mistakes, and we ended up uh, losing in Sweden and winning the bronze medal. But then this team showed me what they're capable of. And as Anthony said, they extracted the lessons, they got better, they used that loss as motivation, and then we played some of our, our best soccer through the rest of the 90s. And uh, I give them full credit for that. So 
I'm probably out of time. I want to thank U.S. Soccer and, and Sunil and Dan for giving me a chance to coach the U-20s in 2008. And by the way, guys, I'm not retired from coaching. And um, I want to thank all of you for coming here and honoring uh, all of us being awarded today. And good luck tonight. Go USA.